the school of aquaponics. I am planning on going commercial with aquaponics and during my study and research, I fell on a document by Dr. Wilson Leonard. He says that Dr. James Rukasi stated that, quote, fish would never be able to supply the essential potassium, calcium, and iron in the amounts that plants need as the fish simply do not contain enough of these nutrients at any feeding rate. This leads to the adoption of an approach to supplement these missing major nutrients via potassium and calcium carrying buffers and chelated iron. So yeah, this is something that I talk about in the um, video um, about compost tea. There's a video titled compost tea where I talk about where it's because the fish feed is not able to supply all the nutrients for the plants that you have to find another way in order to supplement this. You can't just, you know, uh, rely all the way on the fish feed um, to supply all the, uh, the, the nutrients because it's not possible. As, as, at this current time, it's not. So the way that it's done is by supplementing um, with pH buffering agents because we have to up and raise the pH. We have to raise the pH. So um, we use potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide alternating between the two and that is going to give your plants those macronutrients. So, so it kind of works on the behalf because we're gonna have to supplement pH anyway. We're gonna have to adjust pH anyway. So it just, it works out fine that the, the agents that we use to adjust pH happen to be the ones that are lacking in the fish feed. So that's not too much of an issue. The iron on the other hand, it has to be sup supplemented in a chelated form as, we, uh, as already discussed um, because you're not gonna get that. Pretty much that's not gonna be nowhere near enough inside of the feed and unless you have um, a lot of it in your water source, then you're gonna have to supplement some type uh, of way. Further experimentation also shows that the fish feed also did not contain other key nutrients required for plant growth. So what he's referring to is he's talking about how when the UVI first initially um, did the research system on the feeding rates, the proper feeding rates for the correct amount of plant space, they started out with a lower feeding rate because the objective is to feed the least amount of feed to grow the most amount of plants. Where can you find the balance where you can pretty much have a minimum amount of feed input and get the maximum plant production? Um, because you don't wanna be feeding, overly feeding if it's not necessary. So they started out with a lower amount, which is 49 grams per square meter. I have the literature um, inside the house. Um, and what they found out is that 49 grams per square meter doing a deep water culture system is not enough. It's not enough. So there was other nutrients that were deficient um, when they uh, supplied that, that, uh, that amount. The way Rakasi accounted for this was to push up the feeding rate up to 60 to 100 grams per square meter per day, where besides the potassium, calcium, and iron, all other key nutrients were present to a minimal plant requirement. So he pushed up the feeding rate, he raised it up to that's where we get the recommended 60 to 100 grams per square meter. And what does that give? He said the minimum, that's giving you the minimum um, amount of nutrients for plant nutrition. They're not trying to give you excess, he was trying to find out the minimum amount that he can supply for plants to grow and have all of the nutrients available other than the calcium, the, um, the potassium, and, and the iron. So that's when he pushed it up and that's when they found out, okay, all these are available um, at, when we feed at this amount. By doing so, a high amount of fish is produced. However, the outcome was that if the minimal requirements for all nutrients were met, there was an excess nitrogen. You will notice that once you begin running systems at the recommended um, uh, stocking and feeding rates, then you will see an excessive amount of nitrogen. You will see nitrogen is more available than any other um, neutral, uh, neutral, any other uh, mineral or nutrient inside of the system. So that is a consequence of having to push the feed up so far. You have to push the feed up so far that the nitrogen becomes overly available and then the other nutrients become just available, just available enough to the plant for the plant um, to be able to take them up and to actually develop off of the nutrients present in the system. So this is something that, that is definitely expected when you're operating at these ratios. The way Rakasi lowered the excess nitrogen in the system was to use an ingenious approach where a level of controllable denitrification was employed via his tank containing orchard netting. So one of the ways that uh, the UVI um, was able to deal with the excessive nitrogen 
um, in the system is by having a separate tank where it serves multiple purposes um, in, the, in the system. And one of the purposes is um, to have an area where there's a lot of denitrification that is taking place. And denitrification, for some of you guys who don't know, is basically, um, is basically when there's, there's, um, there, there's solids or organic material in areas and pockets in areas where there's little to no oxygen available for the bacteria to um, oxidize. So basically they use the nitrate instead of the oxygen as the terminal electron acceptor um, and in these little anaerobic pockets as the nitrate is uh, nitrate ions are kind of flowing through basically the bacteria are just grabbing it and they're reducing it and they're converting it eventually into a, um, a, a nitrogen gas. Since you stated in this video that the DWC feeding rate is 60 to 100 grams per square meter per day, Rakasi approach, do you also have this denitrification set up in your system? Has thou just questioned the integrity of the aquaponics God? Has thou, my friend, lost it thy mind? Yes, I do have one of those type of setups in my system. I do have one. It's not, yeah, I do have one to answer your question. So this is basically what it looks like right here. So the primary purpose of having this here is it's, it's to capture the fine solids that are not dense enough to settle to the bottom when they pass through the, fil uh, the main filtration. And these are typically fine solids, real small fine particles that um, they're just not dense enough to sink to the bottom. So they end up floating upwards and then exiting out of the main filter. And then this is where they'll get trapped at. You see all of this uh, organic material, all these solids here. This will accumulate and it does accumulate. And this right here, you can see um, it, this has accumulated and it's time to clean this out today. So it accumulates in here and those little pockets that it creates of solids, that becomes anaerobic over time. And, uh, and um, as the water comes through, passes through with the nitrate ions, all that stuff is going to get uh, converted by the nitrifying, denitrifying bacteria and then released as a, nitrous, uh, a nitrogen gas. So this is pretty much what it is. It also blocks small fish that might, you might, if you have a fish that's breeding inside of the tank, um, the fish, they won't make, the, make their way into the sump tank and then eventually or, or to a deep water culture system and then start destroying the roots. So this, ha this has multiple purposes here. Um, uh, uh, for having this. It's, it's not really for denitrification, but that's just like a secondary use of it, um, at least for my system. Um, this Another reason that you would, you would want to have denitrification taking place in your system is if you're growing fruiting crops. Um, if you have excessive nitrate, that promotes a lot of vegetative growth um, and you won't have a, you won't have nearly as good as a, a of a fruit production if you if you grow with an excessive amount of nitrate. So um, that's a good way. You allow this to just build up, let it pack up, and then um, more denitrification, more nitrate stripping will happen, and then you'll have your plant will have more access to the potassium and um, the phosphorus for for fruit growing. So that's another reason you would have this, and, and it's pretty much necessary in a a, a fruit growing. Um, system. So uh, that's pretty much it right there. It's very, very basic, nothing complicated about it. You just have to wash it off and you can control the, the, the denitrification rates. The, as often as you wash it off and clean it, that's how um, less uh, amounts of denitrification that you have taking place. The longer you leave it, the more denitrification that's going to take place. So we're going to clean this out right here, get this all cleaned up. It doesn't take long um, and, and then we end up putting it back because it's about time for a cleaning. Don't be a biscuit-headed grower.